but here's Andres Cavallo, and he's going to give us a quick intro to C&G, um, where he obviously is the founder and CEO. Thank you. Good morning. How is everybody doing today? I take it that la yesterday was a good day for some of you that came uh, during the day or at night, the evening. Um, it really was a fun time uh, to listen and get to share with so many luminaries. Uh, I was very excited about uh, the accepted speech from Alger Sibelman, and I was really excited to hear the remarks from Larry Tittle. Uh, from you know her being inducted into the Digital 360 uh, Hall of Fame, and uh, from him getting our very first Entrepreneur of the Year award, uh, and we have a great pipeline on that. But today I want to really talk to you quickly, and I want to catch up in time and, and get us on, on on track for Bob Champagne's keynote, which is uh, uh, probably one of the most exciting keynotes uh, of the program because. A lot of what we're talking about are really STEM-related, foundational, R&D, deployment, the development, new innovations, this and that. But at the end, a lot of what needs to happen is, you know, how do customers and how the world consumes this stuff. And that's really what matters. But in terms of CMG, you know, you probably figured out by now that I wear two hats. I run CMG that I started in 2014, and then I worked at the university as a professor, a fellow, and co-director of CEDAR, uh, and I basically split my life uh, trying to manage that, and uh, I don't think it's work, I, I love what I do. So if we go to the next slide real quick, uh, the CMG team is made out of sort of all these companies, uh, the, our background together, and we have built a library of 500 use cases, 20 frameworks, we have the expertise to have it deployed roughly 10 billion uh, dollars worth of uh, stuff, me personally, four billion, uh, and some 5,000 projects, and me personally, 2,500,000 of those. Uh, I have the, 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 the opportunity over the years to work with some very smart people across the globe in academia, and I've published 40 books, and I've gotten a bunch of awards, and the team has to, and we have done over 100 projects. Uh, the next slide shows you some of the customers that we have done, and I'll just give you a tidbit. We do strategic planning. We help people figure out, again, how to reinvent themselves around uh, digitalization, decentralization, and decarbonization. So, for example, we did uh, it's spent a lot of time with AT&T over the last five years working with their industrial IoT strategy. We help uh, GM with their uh, electric vehicle strategy uh, four years ago. Uh, we worked with National Grid or Liberty Utilities or uh, American Electric Power with their either telecom strategies or the smart grid strategies. We're right now working with the city of Brownsville and the Public Utility Board of Brownsville for water and gas with their smart grid, smart water strategies and their smart city strategies. Uh, and so everything you heard yesterday from Brownsville, you know, and I think uh, Noel uh, gave us uh, p plenty of remarks on that. Uh, we are right behind making things happen, and we work sort of the, on the quiet side, helping as an extension of a board of directors of a CEO or a city manager or an executive to basically come up with the right strategies and do all these things, just like we have done for Texas State and now we're driving Cedar and helping the university accelerate and grow beyond what's possible. So, you know, real quick, if you go to the next slide, and it's a fill up slide, just click, keep clicking into this full. There's a bunch of disruptions going on and I tell people, you don't wanna be railroaded by these disruptions. You wanna create the strategies to figure out how you survive and thrive on these disruptions, right? These disruptions become great opportunities. And that's what we do at CMG. We help you understand who is, who is doing what, what's going on, who's buying what. So for example, yesterday, if you were paying attention, you know, Audrey Silverman has this amazing journey. We were recognizing her because Pat and John uh, submitted her name 
among many other candidates, and we were really uh, thinking hard about who to give this to every year. And the cool thing is that she's working really at Alphabet Google on something top secret of, out of the many companies they do called the Moonshot Factory. And she's a VP of X, right? They haven't named it yet. And what's that all about? Well, if you, re if you really listen to what she said, and we kind of gave you a hint on that, Google is going to enter the retail energy business globally, not just in the U.S., globally. And they're building how they're going to do it right now, right? I mean, so the kind of transformations, and so we at the university and at CMG are kind of really connected through all the things that are going on with all the super groups and super companies and super family offices across the globe that are driving the transformation of all kinds of industries, water, energy, transportation, construction, and so on. So on the next slide real quick, and the next slides are, I'm just gonna go through, go to the next one. So what we're doing is we have built all these models and go to the next one. And we have built all these capabilities and use cases and understanding the, the, the players and the technologies is who are the best companies for all this. And go to the next one. And ultimately, you, what you want to do is you really got to reinvent what the utility looks like, what the, uh, the city looks like, what the buildings for the commercial and industrial side looks like, and ultimately your homes, right? It, when you think about where we're at, go to the last slide, where, where we're at is, you know, uh, we have all these visions of transforming and accelerating the assets that we have. So think about this for a moment. There are 280 million registered vehicles in America. If they were all electric and the grid could manage them, we would need to create an additional uh, 14,000 gigawatts of production capacity to fill all those cars. The United States today only has 1,100 gigawatts of production capacity for the whole country. Uh, so if all the cars were electric, so switch from gas to electricity, we would need to, you know, multiply the production capacity of the country times 14, 14 times what we have. That means power plants of any kind anywhere, right? So hopefully that production will come really at the edge of the grid and it will be more solar panels and fuel cells at the edge of the grid. But just think about what that means. A lot of people saying, well, half of the cars are going to be electric. Well, for half of the cars to be electric by 2030 or 2040 or whatever, we're going to have to double or triple or quadruple or 14 times increase the output of production capacity of energy, of electricity in the United States. And I, you know, a lot of people are having really done the math. Those are the kind of math numbers that we're always working on and helping fi people figure it out. Here's another one real quick and I'll, and I'll just stop at that. But you know, th we have about roughly 150 million homes in America and roughly 28 million buildings, industrial and commercial in America. So that's roughly 180 million buildings. Those buildings consume roughly 40% of all the energy uh, in the United States. So what if those buildings, 180 million buildings, became power plants and they had all the equipment and the technology to produce energy and export that energy back to the grid? Would we really need then to increase the central plant production from 1,100 gigawatts to 14,000 gigawatts? So those are the kind of things that we need to think differently about the assets that we have, right? Today we have drenching and services coming to all these homes that are gas, water, electric, cable, internet, on and on and on. And maybe the way to do this is differently, which is some of the research that we're doing at the university. What is the was one single pipe conduit that brought everything into that place? The gas, the natural gas, and the internet, and the water, and the power. And, and it was a single facilities provider that then share at the end sort of like how the retail business works in energy, where there's a company that is owning the wires and then a different company that does the billing and the servicing. And so those are the kind of things that we are trying to help people reimagine on the CMG side and the collaboration with the university. So that's what we do. Uh, any of the CMG guys here, you want to raise your hand? You got Tom Rose back there and... Uh, Oh, John, sorry, John, I can't see you. 
John Dwyer, and you, you met Bill Marsh yesterday, perhaps, and he's not here yet. So if you want to talk to us uh, anytime, come on over. And so I want to, I want to digress and really in, uh, come back to uh, uh, introduce the keynote. And I think that Bob has his clicker with him. And so let's bring him up. <laughs> 